Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our discussion. Sabi nga nila, hindi lang broken heart ang dapat mag-move on, pati discussion natin kailangan din mag-move on. So the last time we have discussed, may mga retention pa ba tayo? May mga naaalala pa ba tayo sa ating discussion? If meron pa, edi maganda. If wala, edi ganito yung purpose ko ngayon. Kailangan iparemind ko muna sa inyo yung mga na-discuss natin last week. So the last time we have discussed the uh, basic uh, X-ray imaging system. Kumbaga, before we can produce a good quality radiograph, kailangan familiar muna tayo sa gagamitin nating equipment. So, out of the many uh, X-ray machines that we discussed, na tangi ang ating sinabing diagnostic X-ray machine, which has an energy of 25 to 100 kVp and it is basically used in the field of medicine via the imaging anatomic structures and tissues. Sinabi natin last time na yung ginagamit natin in our program or in our course is diagnostic imaging, uh, diagnostic x-ray system. So ito yung magiging focus ng ating discussion. Paano tayo gagawa ng magandang quality radiograph? Of course, that's with the help of the diagnostic x-ray imaging system. And we had a short tour or a, we had a short virtual tour at the x-ray imaging system of the University of Eastern Philippines. And we said that the primary components of an x-ray imaging system are, if you still remember, we said that it was x-ray tube, which we said it is the heart of the x-ray machine. So the operating console, which is the part that is most familiar to the radiologic technologist, and of course, the high voltage generator. Okay, so uh, we said that, uh, again, most of our topics here in the principles of imaging will solely focus on the operating console, especially we have to learn how to produce the proper amount of KVP, the proper amount of MAS, so that we can um, apply proper amount of quantity or the quality of photon that is necessary for the patient. No? So, uh, we have discussed the external structures of the X-ray tube. So, we have mentioned about the support structures. So, we have mentioned about the ceiling support system, the floor to ceiling support system, and the C-arm. And we have also discussed the protective housing, of course, kasi nga we said that the X-ray tube is the heart of the X-ray machine. Kailangan may nag-pro-protect sa kanya, di ba? Yung heart natin, pero na-protectahan ng thoracic cavity. So, ganun din yung ating X-ray tube. May nag-pro-protect na protective housing and of course, the metal or the glass enclosure. So, this morning, we will discuss all about the internal structures of the X-ray tube. Okay, so before that, li like the last meeting, we had a short uh, story. So this morning, I would like to uh, make a shout out to Miss Jonah May Inreras who um, gave uh, yeah impressive uh, output on their radiation protection. Okay, so be like Jonah. Before, she was not that confident to um uh, let's say to to, to bisan hadlok siya talaga magkapot sa x-ray machine sometimes may mga taong magaling sa theory pero sa sa application sa skills medyo hindi pa masyadong nabibuild but dito sa UEP we have to build again our skills our knowledge and attitude kailangan balance yun so Jonah May is still on the process of um uh, developing her skills, her knowledge, and attitude to produce, uh, to become a good quality radiographer. So, like you, Jonah studied the internal structures of the X-ray tube, the basic operation, and the uh, principles behind the X-ray tube. So, kung nakikita nyo sa picture, confident na siyang i-maneuver, i-manipulate ang X-ray tube 
no? Gimbiberik, ginliliso-liso, gimbiberik-berik na ni at aton X-ray tube para makaproduce na siya in good quality radiograph. And of course, that is one of the main intentions here. Again, so you have to build your confidence. But before that, of course, we have to build our basic knowledge with respect to the X-ray tube. Okay, sige. Kilalun nato ng internal structures of the X-ray tube. Okay, so we said or I know that when you had your introduction to radiologic technology, so alam ko you discussed basic opera uh, concept about the X-ray tube. Probably, you have discussed this portion here. And of course, hindi pwede na hindi ma-discuss itong portion na to. Alam ko, you have differentiated that to, of course, merong positive, meron ditong negative. So, the X-ray tube has two primary components. We have the negative side, which is the cathode. And we have the positive side, which is the anode. So, sige, unahin muna natin ang portion na ito, si cathode. Si cathode has two primary components. We have the filament and the focusing cup. Okay, sige. Ito si filament. The filament is a coil of wire which is similar to that in a kitchen toaster but it is much smaller. Okay, I cannot describe that too. Especially, wala kaming toaster sa bahay. Joke. Of course, hindi, ko, hindi naman pwede natin sirain yung toaster just in, for the sake of this discussion. But it says here that, okay, much, mas maliit yung filament ng X-ray tube compared sa toaster. Because X-ray tube, the diameter is approximately 2 millimeter. And its length is 1 to 2 cm. So in the kitchen toaster, an electric current is conducted through the coil causing it to glow and emit a quantity of heat. Kaya we can, uh, diba, tinotoast yung bread, iniinit yung mga pagkain sa ref gamit yung toaster. So how about sa x-ray tube? Ano ang gamit ng filament? Ah, uh, an X-ray tube filament emits electrons when it is heated. Kailangan mainit pala siya, mainit ang ulo. Hindi, tulad lang yan ng pagmamahal. Hindi pwedeng nanlalamig na siya sa'yo. Kailangan mainit pa rin yung feelings nyo sa bawat isa, sana all. Alam ko talaga mag-explain ng mga feelings-feelings kahit wala akong love life. So, when the current through the filament is sufficiently high, the outer shell electrons of the filament atoms are boiled off. Kasi nga, nainitan na siya. Yung gabing malamig, nagiinit na. So, kailangan may ilabas siya and ejected from the filament. Oy, sorry ha, I don't have I don't want to appear rated X. Um, what I'm trying to say here is out of being heated, nag-eject siya or it nag eject siya ng uh, K particles. Okay. This phenomenon is called thermionic emission. Okay, so like in our example. Okay. Okay, Kin kinabahan ako tuloy sa illustration. Kinabahan ako sa mga nag-iinit-init at saka sa mga labas-labas. Okay, so like in our uh, illustration, ito yung filament. Okay, so when you applied electricity, of course, mag si filament. Okay, and then, since nag siya, nag-glow-glow siya. So in other way around, it produced light. So that is in our fluorescent light. So... Bakit naging part ng illustration dito? Because thermionic emission is sometimes called Edison effect. Si Edison, siya yung nakadiscover ng light bulb. Okay, si Thomas Alba Edison. Kaya, Alba pala, dire Alba. Yun, yun, yun. Okay, so, kaya, yung thermionic emission is termed as sometimes this is called Edison effect. This is in honor of the inventor of the light bulb. Sige nga, meron pa ba dito? Okay. Sige, let's have, uh, I want to elaborate muna on this. No? So, out of this thermionic emission, ano, sige, let's, 
Uh, so, please bear with me na lang ha, kasi sometimes na iba ang screen because of the movement, no? So, if this is the filament, okay, so let's say the we apply current of 2 to 4 amperes. So, basically, our filament is now will be heated. Sabi natin kanina, when it is heated, when it is heated, it emits or uh, it is literally boiled off. Sige. So, when it is boiled off or heated, so technically, nag emit na siya ng electrons. So, yun pala yun. Ano? So, there is now the emission of electrons. Actually, that is the definition of thermionic emission. Thermionic emission, actually, that is the emission of electrons by application of heat. So, do not, do not be confused with photo emission. Sa other branches of uh, imaging, meron tayo tinatawag na photo emission. So, this is emission of electrons by application of light, which is very different sa ating thermionic emission. Okay, sige. Dito, sa thermionic emission, of course, technically, basically, nag emit na siya ng electrons. And these electrons now surround this filament. Okay, yan. Pansin nyo, puro letter E. Okay, puro electrons. So, this cloud of electrons, tawag natin dito, ano yon? Ka dyan. Thermionic emission ka dyan. Tawag natin dito now is the space charge. Mm -mm. So again, space charge, this is the cloud of electrons surrounding the filament following the thermionic emission. Ayun. Okay, so so after, okay, so hindi naman siya basta-basta mag emit ng electrons kasi mayroon tayong tinatawag na space charge effect. Yung space charge effect naman class, this is the limitation in the number of electrons due to electrostatic repulsion. Remember that uh, both charges repel, unlike charges attract. So, pag marami na kasi ditong electron, lalayo ng lalayo, lalayo sila. Okay, so there is that phenomenon in which there is the limitation in the number of electrons surrounding the filament. And that is what we call again, space charge effect. Okay, very good. Okay, so now these electrons, when they travel from the cathode, going now to the anode, iba na yung pangalan nila. Tinatawag na nating PE. PE, projectile electrons. So, remember ha, these terminologies, thermionic emission or Edison effect. After the Edison effect, there will be space charge. And along with that, there is a space charge effect. This is a phenomenon. In this, there is a limitation in number of electrons surrounding the filament due to static repulsion. And after that, when these electrons travel from the cathode going now to the anode, they are now called projectile electrons. Okay, very good. Let's move on. So, filaments are usually made of thoriated tungsten. Okay? So, tungsten provides for higher thermionic emission other, uh, other, uh, than other metals. So, primary component ng filament is tungsten. Kaya lang, hinaluan siya ng thorium. Kaya tawag, thoriated tungsten. So, again, tungsten provides for higher thermionic emission. Ito yung mga tinatawag nating primary reasons or three reasons why we choose uh, filament than other metals as filament uh, material. So, una, it has a high melting point of 3,410 degrees Celsius. And because of that, it is not likely to burn out like the filament of a light bulb. Mm-hmm. So that's another oh, difference between light bulb or filament light bulb and the filament of an X-ray tube. Next, filament does not vaporize easily. Ano? 
Because if it did, the tube would become gassy quickly and its external parts would be coated with tungsten. So, ganun yun. So, hindi siya madaling mag-vaporize. And, bakit hinaluan natin ng bakit hinaluan ng thorium? So, sa illustration, nakikita nyo si Thor. Because yung thorium, pinangalan kay Thor, the Norse god of thunder. So, bakit hinaluan ng thorium ang tungsten? So, Uh, the addition of 1% to 2% thorium to the tungsten enhances the efficiency of thermionic emission and prolongs the tube life. Okay? Sige. So, tungsten vaporization with deposition on the inside of the glass enclosure is the most common cause of tube failure. And remember... Remember that the X-ray tube is the heart of the X-ray machine. If there is the tube failure, actually, hindi lang yung X-ray tube ang dapat palitan doon. That is now, would suggest a total replacement of the whole X-ray machine. Kaya it's very crucial na alagaan mo yung X-ray machine. Ganon sa pag-aalaga ng puso niya para hindi siya malayo. Otherwise, pag masira ang puso mo, masisira ang buong buhay mo. Charot. What I'm trying to say here, it's hard to mend a broken heart. Similarly, it's hard to mend a broken x-ray tube. Otherwise, pag masira ang x-ray tube, we have to replace, palitan ang buong x-ray machine. Okay? So, ultimately, uh, however, tungsten metal does vaporize and is deposited on internal components. This upsets some of the electric characteristics of the tube and can cause arcing and leads to tube failure. Ito, yun na yung illustration natin. Pag, maging, pag ganyan na yung filament natin, wala na. We have to replace uh, all of the x-ray machine. Such malfunction is usually abrupt because uh, we have to follow certain specifications that is in your manual of your x-ray machine. Okay? So, isa yun sa mga dapat nating pag-aralan. Hindi pa ngayon. That is in your equipment maintenance. Kailangan alam natin yung heat units, which technical factors are safe, and which technical factors are unsafe for the tube of operation. Otherwise, if there is the tube failure, we have to replace all of the x-ray machine. Sayang din naman if you purchased with the worth of 2 million, tapos masisira lang ng ganon-ganon. So, sayang yung investment. Ano? Bankruptcy yung hospital nyo. Okay, next. Okay, so next, another component of the... Um, cathode is the focusing cap. So, the focusing cap is negatively charged so that it is electrostatically confines the electron beam to a small area of the anode. The effectiveness of the focusing cap is determined by the size, the shape, its charge, the filament size, and the shape and the deposition or the position of the filament on in the focusing cap. So, therefore, The primary function of the focusing cup is to focus. Kaya focusing cup is to focus this projectile electron towards the portion of the anode which is what we call the target. Okay? FYI, this uh, portion cathode is negative. This portion anode is positive because, sabi nga natin kanina, like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Para yung projectile electrons natin, mas ma-attract siya dito sa positively charged target or positively charged anode. Okay. So, certain types of X-ray tube called the grid-controlled tubes are designed to be turned on and off very rapidly. Okay, grid-controlled tubes are used in portable capacitor discharge imaging systems and in digital subtraction and geography, digital radiography, and sane radiography, each of which requires multiple exposures for precise exposure time. So, these 
examples are actually types of X-ray imaging units which requires serial exposure. When we say serial, di ba, sunod-sunod, halimbawa may putukan, bang, 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 bang. So, kailangan bawat bang may makukuha tayong X-ray image. So, kung mabilisan, so, papalya yung X-ray machine kung talagang to turn on and off ng, ano, gan, ng, ng rapid, ng mabilisan. So, kailangan mahabol natin bawat bang, 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 bang. Paspasan ang kuha. Kailangan natin ng isang component na mag-a-act na switch, di ba? Turn on and off very rapidly. And ito na yung, dyan papasok si grid controlled x-ray tube class do not be confused with the grid that is uh, being used in during imaging kasi may ginagamit tayong grid na remember nyo ba yung uh, malapad na parang uh, metal parang aluminum okay so inilalagay sa ilalim ng pasyente before the x-ray film so that's the grid hindi po yun yung tinutukoy natin dito iba to kasi dito yung tinutukoy nating grid is a type of a switch. Sabi natin, turn on and off very rapidly, especially sa serial imaging. Yung mabilisan, yung paspasan na imaging, kailangan natin ma-turn on and off very rapidly yung ating x-ray tube. And that's what we now have to use the uh, okay, that's the grid. Ito, sa illustration, ito siya. Okay, nakuha. Sige. The term grid is borrowed from vacuum tube electronics. In terms of engineering, this is an element in a tube that acts as a switch. So in a grid-controlled X-ray tube, remember, remember, remember. Actually, this appeared in board examinations for how many times? Ito, the, the question there is, in a grid-controlled tube, this part uh, is the grid-controlled tube. So ito yon, focusing cap. Okay, hindi filament, hindi anode, hindi cathode, but of course, this is the focusing cap which acts as the grid in a grid-controlled X-ray tube. Okay, so again, anong purpose doon? So, it, it is used to turn on and off very rapidly. Remember that, ha? Kasi there are types of examinations that require serial imaging, paspasan, so meaning bawat... Uh, bawat movement, there should be an X-ray image. So, that's the purpose of the grid-controlled X-ray tube. Okay, now let's come to the anode. Kasi not all the time, magpapakanega tayo. Ano? Kailangan maging positive din tayo at some point. Sabi nga nila, think anode, think positive. Although, sa panahon ng pandemic, hindi applicable yung pagiging positive. Pero kailangan, positibo pa rin yung aspeto ng ating buhay. Kahit nasa online class tayo, positibo pa rin na yung dream natin na maging rad tech. Kailangan na ma-achieve ma ma natin yun. Despite the odds, mahirap sa online classes, mahirap sa virtual classes. Laban lang, kailangan natin gawin yan. Okay, sige. Ang dami kong ad -lib. Okay, so uh, the anode is the positive side of the X-ray tube. There are two types of, of anodes. Una, we have stationary. Ito yung mga tipong stick to one. Yung mga tipong hindi nalilingon sa iba. Oh. So, yon stationary anode. Meron din namang mga rotating anode. Sabi nga sa kanta ni Sarah Heronimo, ikot-ikot lang, ikot-ikot, ikot. So, yung mga taong pinapaikot ka lang niya, kaya nahihilo ka, nahihilo ka sa subject nyo, nahihilo ka na sa buhay nyo kasi pinapaikot ka lang niya. Yun yung rotating anode. Ang dami kong hugot, ano? So, stationary anode, X-ray tubes are used in dental X-ray imaging systems, some portable imaging systems, and other special purpose units in which high tube current and power are not required. So, alam nyo kung ano yung purpose ni stationary anodes. Mention natin 
dito. So yan. How about the uh, stage, uh, rotating anodes? So general purpose X-ray tubes use the rotating anode because they must be capable of producing high intensity X-ray beams in a short time. Okay, so by the way, so most of the stationary anodes rotate in 3,400 revolutions per minute. So that's the usual, the common RPM of stationary anode. Actually, some even reach up to 10,000 RPM. Okay, so yun. No? So, hindi pala basta-basta paikutin ka kasi aabot yan ng 3,400 RPM. Okay, joke. Okay, next. The anode serves three functions in an X-ray tube. Kung kanina si filament may three, mm, three reasons why we have to use the uh, tungsten, dito din may three purposes ang ating anode. Una, it serves as the electrical conductor. Okay, by the way, kung mapapansin nyo later, yung discussion natin, we just focus it here sa anode. We just narrowed it down here. Hindi pa, tayo, hindi pa natin malilecture ito kasi hindi siya ganun ka-applicable sa ating principles of imaging. Hindi naman siya gaanong nagko-contribute sa uh, technical factors. Ano. So, saan natin i-discuss? Okay, so, doon natin to i-discuss sa, mm -hmm, sa equipment maintenance next semester. Fast forward lang. So, una again, the anode serves as an electrical conductor. So, siya yung nagre-receive ng uh, electrons from the cathode. Sabi nga natin, kaya negative to positive para ma-attract yung electrons from the cathode to the anode. And ano ulit ang pangalan ng mga electrons that travel from the cathode going to the anode? Very good. That's the projectile electrons. Again, it receives the electrons from the cathode and conducts them through the tube to the connecting table cables back to the high voltage generator. The second function of the anode is it serves as the or provides mechanical support for the target. Okay? Siya yung kakapitan ng ating target. And of course, it must be a good thermal dissipator. Kasi nga nag yung X-ray tube. Remember that when the projectile electrons from the cathode interact with the anode, more than 99% of their kinetic energy is converted to heat. So this heat must be dissipated quickly. So remember last time we have discussed about the Dayala oil number 5. So that's the now the reason. So thermal dissipator. So one of the primary purposes of the uh, anode. So yung heat na na-convert, i-dissipate niya, papalamigin niya ulit yung ating X-ray tube. So yung anode is primarily composed of or primarily made of copper, molybdenum, and graphite. Okay? No other materials are mentioned in our references. So adequate heat dissipation is the number or the major engineering hurdle in designing high-capacity X-ray tubes. Remember that again, 99% of our X-ray beam or projectile electrons are converted to heat. Only 1% is converted to X-ray. Ano? So bukod tangi. So out of the 100 percent projectile electrons na mumukod tangi yung isa doon na mako-convert into x-ray. Okay. Sige. Okay, so kung ang an cathode may specific parts such as filament and the focusing cup, si anode naman may mga specific parts din. Una, we have the target. The target, this is the area of the anode that is struck by the electrons from the cathode. Target, of course, siya talaga yung uh, pupuntahan ng projectile electrons. So in stationary anode tubes, the target consists of a tungsten alloy embedded in a copper anode. In rotating uh, anode tubes, the entire rotating disk is the target. So, as you can see in our illustration, isa lang naman yung pinuntahan niya. Hindi siya nag, 
pumunta na doon, hindi siya dito. Pumunta siya sa target. Okay, so aside from the target, we also have a specific portion of the target which is the focal spot. So the focal spot, this is the area of the target from which x-rays are emitted. Radiology requires small focal spots because the smaller the focal spot, the better the spatial resolution of the image. So unfortunately, as the size of the focal spot decreases, the heating of the target is concentrated on a smaller area. This is the limiting factor to the focal spot. Okay? So, maliit. So, mas, kung mas maliit yung focal spot, mas madaling mag-init yung focal spot. So, whereas, kung malaki yung focal spot or malaki yung area, mas... Hindi siya madaling mag-init yung x-ray tube, ano? So, the focal spot is the actual x-ray source. Okay? Next. Most diagnostic x-ray tubes have two focal spots. One large and the other which is small. So, the small focal spot is used when better spatial resolution is required. So, the large focal spot is used when the body parts are imaged or large body parts are imaged and when other techniques that require high, high heat are required. Sige, let me put, so, or let me emphasize some parts on this. Ano? So, sabi dito, the small focal spot is used when better spatial resolution is required. So, let's consider these two illustrations, especially itong mga parts na to, yung mga bibilugan ko. Okay? So, consider this one. Compare nyo dito. Di ba mas malaki yung shaded area dito? So, yung mga, shade, yung mga areas na yan, yung tinatawag natin sa radiography na penumbra. Or, these are the uh, unsharp edge, edges of an image. So, I th okay. So, kumbaga shadow. Or, more likely, this is blurring of an image. So, yun yung mga penumbra. So, with the use of smaller focal spot size, mas sharp yung image compared dito na may shadowing or there are blurring. So, kaya nga, mas magandang gamitin daw yung small focal spot if spatial resolution, the, 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 the higher uh, or sharper the image compared with the large focal spot. So, selection. Paano natin masasabing... Uh, gumagamit na tayo ng small focal spot or gumagamit na tayo ng large focal spot. Ito yun. So, selection of one or the other focal spot is usually made with the MA station sa console ng ating X-ray machine. Sa operating console. Okay, so, normally, either filament can be used with lower MA. So, 300 MA or less. So, pwedeng gamitin yung, okay, uh, pwedeng, gum, uh, uh, pwedeng gumamit ng uh, smaller or big focal spot if the MA is low than or equivalent to 300 MA. So, at approximately 400 MA and up, so, eto na siya. Larger focal spot is allowed because the heat capacity of the anode should or could be exceeded if small focal spot were used. Okay, so pag technique factors mo is now 400 MA and above, so ito na, specific na, large focal spot na yung ginagamit natin. Okay, <clears throat> so before the rotating anode was developed, another design incorporated, uh, uh, another design incorporated into X-ray tube targets to allow a large uh, area for heating while maintaining a small focal spot. Diba sabi natin kanina, if we are using small focal spot, so mataas yung chance na magiinit talaga yung x-ray tube. So ano na yung naging remedy ng mga manufacturers? So gumamit sila ng line focus principle. So by angling the target, one makes the effective area of the target much smaller than the actual area of the electron interaction. Parang medyo magulo pa, no? Okay? Sige. Um, bibigyan ko lang kayo ng mas malinaw na uh, definition ng line focus principle. Si line focus principle, ito yung uh, relationship 
Sana all, may relationship. Ako, wala. So, this is the relationship of the effective focal spot and the actual focal spot. Okay? Sige, ito yun. The effective target area or the effective focal spot size, this is the area projected onto the patient and the image receptor. Ito yung effective focal area. And this is the value given when large or small focal spots are identified. When the target is made smaller, the effective focal spot size is also made smaller. Diagnostic X-ray tubes have uh, target angles that vary from approximately 5 to 20 degrees. Okay, so ito naman siya. This is the actual focal spot. Okay? So, sabi natin kanina, ulitin ko lang, line focus principle, this is the relationship of the effective focal spot and the actual focal spot. So, angling the target. This is the line focus principle. So, when we angle smaller focal spot, so we introduce higher effective focal spot, ano? So, mas nami-minimize uh, yung heat. So, that's one of the primary function purposes why there is the need for the angling or angulation of the uh, focal spot. Ano? Other than that, sige, later may mga effect yan. Sige nga. When a smaller image receptor is used, the anode angle can be steeper. So, the advantage of the line focus principle is that it simultaneously improves spatial resolution and heat capacity. Kasi gumamit tayo ng small focal spot. Diba? Sabi natin, smaller focal spot, mas maganda yung resolution. Mas uh, mawawala yung blurring or shadowing ng image. And But if we use a small focal spot, uh, magiinit. Okay, so with the use of uh, line focus principle, mas mataas na yung heat capacity. So the line focus principle results in an effective focal spot size which is much uh, less than the actual focal spot size. So, tingnan natin dito. Okay, Mat malaki talaga yung actual focal spot. Take note. Compare mo dito sa effective focal spot. Kasi if wala siyang angulation, di ba? Wala siyang angulation, nakaganyan lang siya. Of course, parang equivalent lang ata sila. Whereas, na-angle natin, so pinaliit natin yung effective focal spot. Okay? Sige. Now, let's come to the anode heel effect. I think yung mga girls dito makaka-relate sa anode heel effect. Especially yung mga gumagamit ng mga 6 inches na mga heels. Yung may mga tiis ganda dyan. Sige, ano yung relationship dito? Okay, sige. The x-rays that constitute the use useful beam toward the anode side must traverse a greater thickness of target material than the x-rays emitted toward the a cathode direction. Sabi sa anode heel effect, uh, magkaiba yung intensity ng naproduce na X-ray dito sa anode side compared sa cathode side ng X-ray tube. So, ganun yung anode heel effect. So, there is the variation of the X-ray intensity between the anode side of the X-ray tube to the cathode side of the X-ray tube. Gets? Okay, very good. So, the intensity of X-rays that are emitted through the heel of the target is reduced because they have a longer path through the target and therefore increased absorption. This, heel, this is the heel effect. So, the smaller the anode angle, the larger is the heel effect. Okay. Sige. Pero parang girls, ano, parang parang iba ata yung application ng anode heel effect sa pagsusuot nyo ng mga heel. Kasi kung, kung mataas na yung heels, mas 
tiis ganda na. Whereas kung naka-flat shoes lang tulad ng pagkakaroon mo ng flat na chest, so hindi pa ganun katiis ganda. Sorry girls, sorry lang. Okay, so uh, dito iba. So kung mas, ma- mas mababa yung angulation, mas mataas yung heel effect. Ito yon. Okay, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na anode heel effect. Sabi, diba? Sabi natin, mas mataas yung intensity ng x-ray beam sa cathode compared sa anode. Take note, kasi parang reflection ata yan eh. Parang reflection lang yan. Kaya, therefore, mas mataas talaga yung intensity sa uh, cathode side. Okay? So, the difference in radiation intensity across the useful beam of an X-ray field can vary by as much as 45%. The central array of uh, the uh, useful beam is the imaginary line generated by the centermost X-ray in the beam. So, if the radiation intensity along the central ray is designated as 100%, then the intensity of the cathode side may be as high as 120, whereas that on the anode side may be as low as 75%. Okay, so ano yung magiging application ng anode heel effect sa paggawa ng quality radiograph? Ito yun. Para next time, hindi na kayo sigawan ng radiologist nyo na hindi kayo marunong ng anode heel effect, Papakain, ipapakain ko sa iyo yung x-ray film. So, ito yung anode heel effect. The heel effect is important when one is imaging anatomical structures that differ greatly in thickness or mass density. Consider mo yung katawan ng tao. Yung katawan mo. Iba-iba yung density. Iba-iba yung thickness. Diba? So, yung... Uh, chest and abdomen mo asan yung mat, mata uh, ma, makapa uh, ano tawag dito y- y- yung mas malaki yung chest or yung abdomen nako pag mas malaki yung abdomen there's something wrong diet diet naman pag may time so in general positioning the cathode side remember the cathode side of the x-ray tube over the thicker part of the anatomy provides more uniform radiation exposure of the image receptor. The cathode and the anode directions are usually indicated in the protective housing, sometimes near the cable connectors. Sige, start muna natin dito. No? Para hindi kayo malito kung nasaan yung anode at saka yung cathode, kung magmamanipulate na kayo tulad yung ginawa ni Jonah, kanina pinosisyon na niya yung x-ray tube para hindi kayo malito nasaan yung cathode at saka nasaan yung anode side. Actually, sa protective housing, mayroon doong sign, positive, that is to indicate that that is the anode side. Negative, to indicate that that is the cathode side. Okay, sige. This part naman. In general positioning, the cathode side should be or uh, of the x-ray tube over the thicker part of the anatomy provides more uniform radiation exposure of the image receptor. For example, nag x ray ka ng foot. Okay. So, alam naman natin na mas intense dito yung uh, x-ray beam compared dito Tapos, yung ginawa mo, nilagay mo yung anode doon sa heel. At, nilagay mo naman yung cathode doon sa malapit sa digits. So, anong magiging resulta ng x-ray film mo? Of course, choco na gatas, gatas na choco. So, alam mong mahina yung intensity, bakit nilagay mo dyan sa makapal na area? So, maglalabas dyan is gatas na area. Ito, alam mo na na mataas yung intensity, manipis yung part. ba? Choco na choco. Ang itim na itim sa part na, dyan, na yan. So, the heel effect, again, itong part na to naman, the heel effect is important when one is imaging anatomical structures that differ greatly in thickness or mass density. Okay. So, kailangan alam natin yung positioning ng x-ray tube per body part. So, we have to consider our structure. Asan yung makapal, asan yung manipis. 
Okay, so watch out nyo sa Moodle. May ipapasok ako dyang uh, exercise. Okay, so answer nyo na lang. Thank you very much. So, okay, let's move on. So, in chess, the geography. So, for example, the cathode should be inferior. Okay, uh, paano natin gagawin to? So, ito yung ulo. Ito yung chest. Okay, uh, parang ano na siya. Okay. So, pag mag -e x ray ka daw ng chest... So, the lower thorax in the region of the diaphragm is considerably thicker than the upper thorax and therefore requires higher radiation intensity if X-ray exposure of the image receptor is to be uniform. Kung nag-chest X-ray tayo, kailangan yung negative should be on the inferior or low, nasa baba, and the positive should be nasa taas. Again, paano natin ma-check? Nasaan yung anode? Nasaan yung cathode? Nasa protective housing. May mga signs doon. Okay? So, okay, so, um, before we move on, i-review ko lang yung medical terminology nyo, no? Kasi baka sa model, mapansin nyo, may gamitin akong ibang terminology. When we say cephalic, that is towards the head. Or, normally, ano, yung uh, i-consider mo na lang yung katawan ng tao. If the x-ray tube is situated parang uh, towards the head or the, let's say, let, let's say, the, let's say in this uh, illustration, anode. So, to, uh, malapit siya sa portion ng head. So, pwede natin gamitin yung cephalic. Okay. So, caudal naman caudal or caudad if let's say for this illustration the cathode malapit siya sa portion ng or to uh, the position is parang papunta papunta siya doon sa feet so the, we will use the term caudal okay gets okay ganun talaga yung gusto ko sa mga BSRT2 students madaling makagets okay next In abdominal imaging naman, on the other hand, medyo baliktad siya sa chest uh, radiography. The upper abdomen is thicker than the lower abdomen and pelvis and it requires that the greater X-ray intensity or, or for uniform X-ray exposure. Sa abdomen daw, mas makapal yung diaphragm compared mo sa pelvic cavity. So normally, the cathode should be towards the head or cephalic. And... Okay, wala ng question. Okay, so, mas mataas yung intensity sa cathode. So, therefore, the cathode should be placed towards the head. Okay, very good. So, in mammography, the X-ray tube is designed so that the more intense side of the X-ray beam, the cathode side is positioned towards the chest wall. Kasi yung breast or the nipple side, more of soft tissue na siya. Kaya, nandun na yung anode. So, the cathode again should be directed towards the chest wall. With the angling of the X-ray tube, advantage can be taken of the foreshortening that occurs to the focal spot size, resulting in an even smaller effective focal spot size. Hi. Okay. So, last, probably this is off-focus radiation. Okay. So, X-ray tubes are designed so that projectile electrons from the cathode interact with the target only at the focal spot. Sabi natin kanina, dapat yung mga projectile electrons maglaland lang sila sa kanilang target. Hindi na dapat lilingon pa sa iba. Kumbaga, ikaw boy, crush mo si girl A. Dapat doon ka manliligaw sa kanya, hindi mo sila pagsasabayin kasi tawag dyan, o oh, focus radiation ka na. Type mo siya, type mo din siya na dalawa na yung type mo, dalawa yung target. Hindi pwede, dapat isa lang yung target. ha So, however, some of the electrons, gaya ng mga sinabi ko, bounce off the focal spot and then land on other areas on the target causing the X-rays to be produced from outside the focal spot. These are off-focus radiation. 
So sa kanya ka unang sa kanya ka unang tumibok pero nagkagusto ka din sa kanya na may feelings kayo pareha, may feelings ka sa kanya parehas. So tawag sa isa of focus radiation. Of focus radiation is undesirable because it extends the size of the focal spot. Kasi hanggang dito lang dapat yung useful beam. Eh, may naproduce kang iba. So, ito na siya. No? So, the additional x-ray beam area increases the skin dose modestly but unnecessary. Hindi na dapat. Kaya, moral lesson based on the off-focus radiation, kailangan stick to one. Okay. So, off-focus radiation can significantly reduce image contrast. Kasi meron tayong exposure which are unnecessary. Ito yon, Ito yon, Sige. Baka sabihin bitter ako. Para sa ibang mga beshi dyan, ito yung Facebook post. Sabihin natin, ito yung post. Pero, may mga iba dyan sumasalo. Affected ka, besh? Affected ka, te? Baka hindi naman ikaw yung pinapatamaan. So, yun yung off-focus radiation. No? So, Of focus radiation or can image patient tissue that was intended to be excluded. Hindi na dapat na expose tong area na to. But with of focus radiation, na expose pa din. Ano? So sometimes this of focus radiation is out of the control of radiologic technologists. So Okay, so examples of such undesirable images are in the ears of the skull examination, the soft tissue beyond the cervical spine, and the lungs beyond the borders of the thoracic spine. Like in this example, dapat ito lang yung x-ray natin, pero na-expose natin ang part na to. This is primarily because of off-focus radiation. Off-focus radiation is reduced by designing a fixed diaphragm. Ito o. Kailangan meron tayong panakip butas. Ouch! So, this is, um, that is placed near the window of the x-ray tube. This is a geometric solution. Another effective solution is kailangan uh, gumamit tayo ng metal enclosure tube rather than the x-ray tube. So, kailangan mas patatagin natin ang feelings natin sa kanya. Okay? Hindi kailangan maging marupok. So, electrons reflected from the focal spot are extracted by the metal enclosure and conducted away. Therefore, they are not available to be attracted to the target outside the focal spot. The use of grid, yung sinasabi ko kanina na parang metal na inilalagay after the patient and before the image receptor cannot reduce the off-focus radiation. Although, the purpose of that grid is to filter out scatter radiation. But it cannot filter out off-focus radiation. Mali, mali, okay? So, that ends my lecture for today. Although, hindi pa tayo tapos sa X-ray Imaging System. Diniscuss lang natin yung um, primary X-ray Imaging System. The next week, we will discuss the accessories of uh, X-ray Imaging System. So, if you have concerns, if you have questions, alam nyo na how to reach me out. So, do not hesitate. This is, in one way or another, this is for the benefit of everybody. So, without any concerns, I have to adjourn my lecture. So, see you next week. Keep safe and goodbye.